Hello everyone, it is me, Pui, and I am here to talk today about an incredibly powerful and explosive deck that everyone knows and no one is playing. It's Reasoning Gate Turbo. No, I'm not talking about any Cybersteins here. I am talking about good old-fashioned Dimension Fusion Reasoning Gate Turbo, sometimes known as Ham. I don't know why, but that's what we're talking about today. In 2021, GoFormat.com rated this as an A-tier deck on their tier list. These days, people see it as nothing more than a deck for dueling book ladder noobs and that one guy at the GOAT format championship who hasn't been paying attention to what people are playing at all. And the data backs up this perception. I did a survey of format library data for the past 13 events that I could find data for. These were all events offering a world championship invite and had more than 10 players, no obelisks. Among these events, there was an average of 1.7 Reasoning Gate Turbo players per event. Some of these events having over 200 users playing. And this data is still skewed because more than half of these events did not have a single Reasoning Gate player in them. No one has topped with Reasoning Gate all year. And last year, Matt Uber had more tops with Steingate than any other Reasoning Gate player had combined. Where did this deck go? Alephia 2 won with it once, topped with it another time. This was the deck that put Noelle on the map. Her name is the name of the deck. It's the, the deck, and that's her name, and name, deck, deck, name. What happened to this deck? It was everywhere, and now it's virtually nowhere. Some may say that this deck was merely power crept out, that the metagame changed and evolved past it, and it just isn't good enough to cut the mustard, but I think there is more to this story. So today, I'm going to be talking about how this deck fell out of favor, what's been holding it back, and why I think it may be time to make its return to the big stage of the GOAT format meta. I think by doing so, we'll learn a whole lot about people's perception of what is good versus what can actually be good. So hopefully you make it to the end of the video to learn some valuable lessons, and be sure to subscribe if you want to know more about Wizarding Gate or about the GOAT format meta as a whole. So let's begin by answering the question, what killed RGT? Not long ago, Reasoning Gate Turbo was the salt miner's choice in GOAT format. No one left the house without some sort of sideboard tech to win the matchup, and the deck would be undoubtedly called Tier 1 or Tier 1.5. These days, however, Hey, would you call Reasoning Gate Tier 1.5? So what happened? How did this deck fall so far from grace so fast? It's not even been a year in a 17-year-old format. Well, I think I can boil it down to three factors. Number one, Solemn Judgment. From as recently as up to halfway through 2021, Solemn Judgment was not that common a card. People thought that the life was really relevant in GOAT format, and that it was too hard to just use in every day. That all changed when Chaos Warrior hit the scene hard, and Turbo followed suit, playing three Solemns of their own in most builds. In beginning my journey to figure out what happened to Reasoning Gate, I started by speaking with Alephia 2, who's topped and won multiple events using the deck. He had this to say, it has fallen out of favor with the rise of Warrior and also Chaos Turbo maining Solace. If you get a few extra turns, which Warrior doesn't often allow, RGT can combo off nicely. Solemn is definitely a problem. One factor is that it can protect other back row, but more important is the specific negation of Gate or Dimension Fusion. With RGT, sometimes you have to get a combo sequence going with a sort of desperate Gate or similar, and a good player will often feel in Solemn that. That's often just GG right there. So, this is the most obvious option and one that most people would point to. Giant Trunade, played by RGT, was a mostly uncontested card unless your opponent had sided with threatening floors until quite recently. These days, everyone is playing basically 1-3 negates in their deck that can stop the Trunade and protect their other back row removal. This greatly reduces RGT's ability to kill in one turn versus before. But, this is hardly where the story ends. Reason number two is Matt Uber. Just Matt Uber. This GOAT community Italia regular took the online scene by storm with his Steingate deck, winning a world invite in an online GCI event. Then he did it again, and then again, and then again, and then again. He topped a lot of times with Steingate, so people started taking the Steingate. Clearly there was something there. When I asked Matt Uber why he played Steingate over Reasoning Gate, he said it was a matter of power, cost, and deck building. Most importantly out of these for our discussion was the matter of power. He said that Steingate is better at setting up faster and with fewer cards. And indeed, he's right. If you have a Cyberstein and a Megamorph on an empty board, your opponent is dead. 
If you have a Cyberstein, a Megamorph, and a True Nade, their spells and traps no longer matter. And if you have a Cyberstein, a Megamorph, a True Nade, and a Mind Control, all on turn one, after your opponent T sets, they are just dead. Unless they remain in Karibo, they are just dead. And so, of course, there's quite an allure here. It's a simpler deck to play, and it's more consistent. However, it is more fragile. The only thing is that people weren't exploiting this fragility. Warriors had a decent matchup against it, but no one had experience against Steingate because the only one playing Steingate was Matt Uber. There were a lot of imitators of Uber, but very few of them saw as much success as Uber. Nonetheless, it took all the attention away from Reasoning Gate, people assuming that this was the new way to play it. Furthermore, anyone who tried Reasoning Gate was now having their messages mixed because they might have been trying to do Steingate and Reasoning Gate at the same time. I'm here to tell you, they're not the same deck. Very simply put, Dimension Fusion costs 2,000 life points, and Cyberstein costs 5,000. If you want to use them both in the same game, that costs 7,000 life points. How easy is it to lose 1,000 life points in GOAT? It's pretty easy. You can't use both cards at the same time, and trying to usually ends in impossible situations where you've lost to yourself. Building both decks at the same time doesn't work because Cyberstein and Reasoning Gate usually doesn't feel like a good fit, whereas any other monster besides one that focuses on Stein and Steingate usually takes away from the Megamorph OTK. So, we had yet another contender to take RJT's attention away. But an even bigger one, and reason number three, is Pandaburn. If you've watched my video Discussing Disgusting with Frog Slicer, which you totally should and you can do so here or here, then you'd know about my idea of the bell curve of Disgusting decks. At this end, we have the noobs who pick up the deck because they don't care about the RNG as long as they can beat better players without knowing any skills in the format. Down here is a large amount of players who are aware of the RNG and are too scared of it to try and pick up the deck. And over here is a very small amount of players who pick up the deck, train with it really hard, and know how to mitigate the RNG and find the highest chance of success. The key to this idea is that in order to have even a few of these people, we need to have a lot of these people. And that even these people can lose some faith sometimes. So, if the deck's underperforming, they'll read the meta and know it's time to leave. That's where Panda Burn comes in to make sure that no more intake of these people shows up for Reasoning Gate. You see, Panda Burn wins worlds, Queen's Burn World is created, the deck's everywhere, it's hard to interact with, it's pretty easy to play at a rudimentary level, and it starts taking the attention of the metagame and of new players who want to try a deck that isn't just Chaos Turbo, Warriors, or Control. Panda Burn was perfectly positioned to beat Chaos Turbo and Warriors at its inception. No one was really able to interact with Ojama Trio effectively, and the burn damage punished the new prevalence of Solemn Judgment. So between Solemn, Burn, and Steingate stealing the spotlight, we had a perfect storm for RGT to be pushed out of the meta completely. But if you really pay attention, these circumstances aren't in place like they were before. Panda Burn went from being a rogue favorite that no one was prepared for to a tier 1 deck where everyone brings walks to the table. Those walks are now replacing cards that once were for RGT, and Chaos Turbo builds are going down their Solemn Judgments both for Mirrors and for Panda Burn in the main. Not to mention Steingates seemed to magically disappear as soon as Matt Uber decided he didn't want to play it anymore. Never mind the fact that people started calling 2 and exploiting the fact that the deck plays with a virtual 3000 life points from turn 1, so why hasn't the deck returned? Well, it has a lot of inherent flaws. It's got RNG. It's got some brick hands. It's easy to sideboard against if people know it's coming. And Steingate seems to be clearly better. The reality is that people haven't not tried. It's that they're trying wrong. Mostly because of Steingate and Noelgi, people assume that Reasoning Gate Turbo is meant to be built as an OTK deck. And without a lot of preparation, they think they can bring it to one event as a secret weapon. They make a glass cannon that hasn't been properly tested for the meta and they usually get shut down. The players who could really legitimately organize and try to make something powerful out of Reasoning Gate usually don't, assuming that it's just been pushed out of the meta. The player I've seen put the most thought and preparation into Reasoning Gate as of late is the user Mangoes Really Suck. He made a list that he brought to GFC 16. He unfortunately had his run killed by a couple of Trinsacks, but he got a really impressive win over Lucas the Heretic, the top player of 2021 for the entire year. In talking to Austin and watching his videos, I got a sense that his reasoning gate is very different than what most people understand about the deck. He doesn't like it linear. His favorite parts are the versatility that Demok and Metamorphosis provide. He doesn't like it to be a glass cannon. 
he's playing three goats and three meta, and he's playing Sinister Serpent to go with his one Regeki break and three meta over the long run. Alephia 2 similarly talked long ago about how he prefers his reasoning gate to be slower and more drawn out than these OTK center decks that people think about when they think about the deck. Austin is clearly with this deck trying to overwhelm the opponent over multiple turns using Defu as a nail on the coffin rather than a must kill threat, whereas Stein leaves you pretty vulnerable. But even he is only one guy, and one guy isn't enough to really make stuff happen. Still, I think if people put in the time, Reasoning Gate could come back. If you look at those same stats I mentioned before, you'll see that not only is Reasoning Gate basically nil in the format, but Reasoning Gate Hate is pretty much nil in the format. Out of these 13 events, Ashura Priest showed up as the most Reasoning Gate Hate card there was at 11 slots. Trailing way behind Ashura Priest were some combination of Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer, Book of Moon, King Tiger Wang Hu, and Gravekeeper Spy if you even want to call these sides for RGT. We have no Jalgens, no Curse Seal of the Forbidden One, Threatening roars around, but if you're playing Raisin and Gate this way, then one turn of no attacking isn't the biggest deal, especially if you already have Jinzo out. So, with so little hate, maybe it's time for the deck to come back. If you look at Panda Burn, what was really key to its success was that a team worked on it, and then another person saw that team worked on it and worked on it even further, and then they all gathered in Pui's Burn World and other places and worked on it even further. If we had 50 Reasoning Gate players this instant start playing the deck, then in two months we would figure out all the ratios we possibly needed to make the deck top tier. This is simply the reality of the GOAT meta. There are cards that are good, there are cards that are not good, and then this giant pile in the middle is cards that people have forgotten are good. They make up reasons they're not good. Assume that those reasons will continue to last throughout the metagame until all of a sudden someone comes along and goes, I think this is pretty good. And it's as simple as that. And no one is brave enough to do it. So I highly recommend you take another look at the deck. Try to play it slow and drawn out. Maybe go look at Austin's video and use his list of the jumping off point. Talk about the deck. Read the meta. See how vulnerable it is and see how you could handle the cards in the main decks of matchups. You're prepared for them. They're not prepared for you. I think RGT could come back. Do you? Thank you so much for watching this video and a huge thanks to Alephia2, Matt Uber, and Mangos Really Suck for their contributions. You should definitely go check out Mangos Really Sucks channel and subscribe to this channel if you want more little goat video essays. For now, I'm going to leave you with a couple of Reason and Gate replays, and I hope you have a lovely day.